Shabbat Shalom, Sen Bet Salam. This is a Shabbat day. This is October 19th. Now, it's very important for us as uh, Beta Rastafari, as Hebrew, Beta Rastafari, and as Israelites, as Israelites, as Beta Israel, as well, to recognize our holy days and our holy times so that we can align our hearts and our minds with our blameless Creator in the name of Yeshua, the Black Messiah, Yehoshua, otherwise known as Jesus Christ or Jesus Christos. So this day, this particular day that um, we're recording, this is the whole Sha'ina, the whole Sha'ina Araba, the whole Sha'ina Araba, or what's often called Hosanna, this particular day. Now, we had <coughs> sought to um, um, give a couple of pointers to the disciples and to the brethren and the sister and who study with us, because some have already gone ahead into the new cycle of Torah readings. And part of that we take responsibility for because we did not have the opportunity as of yet to to teach on the holy days as well as the orit or the Torah portions, how they are read and how when certain holy days come around, um, such as this particular feast season, which is known as the fall festival season, which contains three particular holy um, convocations and observances. One is the Rua or the trumpets. Secondly is Yom Kippur or is the Day of Atonement. And thirdly is the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Ingatherings, otherwise known in the Hebrew or the Bet Ivraist Kwankwa as Sukkot. As Sukkot. And this particular day, which would make the seventh day, is what's known as the Hoshana Araba or the Hoshana Hoshana Araba. Let me show you. Bamarenya in the Amharic, which also helps us to reconstruct the biblical Hebrew, this particular day is known as Hoshana Hoshana Araba either as a rabba, but keep in mind uh, a rabbi, which is to say rabbi, our rabbi is Yehoshua HaMoshiach, or is Jesus Christos. So now, this is hope, this is Sha. Now, some modern Ethiopians will say this as Sha. And this letter right here is Nagusu Se. Nagusu Se. And this particular Nagusu Se is very important. In the Hebrew, it's known as Shin. But this is Ho, Sha. Now, this is the Ain, A, or E. Uh. Uh. Now, we usually do the backward apostrophe instead of the forward apostrophe because there's two A sounds. There is one, the Alf, and there is the other one, which is the Oin, the oin. So this is the oin ah. So ho sha e, ho sha e, ho sha e. It's a deeper, more masculine a sound. Ho sha e, and this is na. So this is ho sha e. Now often it's known as hosanna. Hosanna among the Gentiles. This is known as Hosanna. Now, Araba, Araba, which is uh, means the great. It means the great one. And this is where the root of a rabbi or a rebbe, a rebbe, Bamarinya. In the Ethiopic, we know this as a rebbe. A rebbe, the in the Taragomo, according to the translation is um, uh, memhir bamarinya, which means, uh, could mean teacher, but the word 
a rabbi or a rabba or a rebbe actually comes from the Reb or Arab, and that comes from the Eastern Shemitic, not the Western Shemitic. Ethiopic is Western Shemitic. Ancient Egypt we can also consider to be Western Shemitic. So this is a little bit of geography right here, but we just want to break down the name and build up the name. So this is Araba, and in parentheses we have Arabi, you understand? Know or some would say Arabi, others would say Rabbi, right? Which means actually great. So this is the great whole shot in the whole shot in the. Now, where does, where does this particular day? What's the root scripturally and biblically? So please. Um, get your pen and paper, grab your pen and your paper, and bring a willing and attentive mind, willing and ready to receive the truth and your holy scriptures, the B-I-B-L-E, the Metzhaf Kedus. And now uh, we utilize the Schofield Study Bible, and those who would like to um, utilize it online, we have it up and available for a free download at www.lojsociety.org forward slash study, forward slash study, and there's other archival and free downloadable freeware and shareware available at our website and more to come, y'all yeah, willing. So now we're going to go to Leviticus. Let's turn our Bibles to Leviticus to understand how important this seventh day as we're in the culmination of Sukkot, the culmination of ingathering the culmination of tabernacles or the feast of booths, the feast of huts. And Bamarinya Das Baal is the Das Baal. The Das Baal is the feast of Das and the Das Bamarinya in Ethiopia, some call it the Tikul and some call it the Gojo as well, the native African huts. This is how the Beit Israel dwelt in the wilderness sojourn after they came out of Egypt. So this particular um, holy season that we're in and the wrap-up to it and this particular feast, the Feast of Tabernacles, is a metasebia. Metasebia means that it's a memorial. It's a memorial of remembrance. But also in the prophetic for us as Beta Israel or Falashes of the West, for us as black Hebrews and black Jews and Hebrew Israelites and elect Arastafari, and there's many different names or descriptions of who we are, but the reference point, the key reference point is that we are the once lost but now found Beta Israel or the ethnic Jews, otherwise known as the black Jews or black Hebrews who have been known by the byword, the prophetic byword, which is the N-word or the Negro word or the nigger word. So those who this word applies to, the N-word, historically, this is our once lost but now found way of life. So this particular day is important. So we're going to go through the scriptures to Leviticus chapter 23. So turn to Leviticus chapter 23 and we'll begin from verse 39. And it reads, Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast to yod heh wow heh Yahweh, or in your Bibles, capital L-O-R-D, seven days, seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. On the first day shall be a Shabbat or Bamarinya, a Senbet. And on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath, or a Shabbat, or Bamarinya, and in the Ethiopic, a Senbet. Verse 40, And ye shall take you on the first day the bowls of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and bowls of thick trees, and willows of the brook. Now these are the four kinds, and there's some very important teaching and significance that even the 
other Jews or the OJs, as we use this expression to distinguish ourselves from them and to describe who is speaking of the other Jews or the German and the European Jews, the religious and the faithful ones have done some very interesting and important study. Now, we know that the other Jews are that prophetic wild olive tree that Hawaria Paulos, the Apostle Paul, in his epistles speaks of the natural branches being broken off. That's us, my brothers and sisters. We're those natural branches that were broken off because of disobedience. They, on the other hand, were converted, many of them, to this way of life. Many have been faithful and seek to be faithful. But, of course, there are the Jews who say they are Jews and are the synagogue of Satan. We need to know ourselves and we need to know them. But once we get to know ourselves based on the truth of Yahweh's word and the true history and our story, then the whole picture will come into perfect focus and clarity. So let's continue with verse 40 where it says, And ye shall rejoice before Yahweh your Elohim, or your God, if you please, seven days. So the Feast of Tabernacles is a feast, is a seven-day feast. And this Feast of Tabernacles for us began the 12th of October. Now, the 12th of October, according to the lunar uh, Hebraic calendar in the heavens, the 12th of October was the 15th day of the seventh month of Tishrei. And uh, Tizrei or Tishrei is the, is the Hebraic, the Hebraic, the biblical and the Hebraic name for the seventh month. More teaching and more study needs to be done on telling time from our Hebrew way of life and the Hebrew establishment because it's the foundation for us, especially for us as the elect Aras Tafari and for all of us as Ethiopian Hebrews, as black Jews, as black Hebrews, and as Hebrew Israelites as well. Because the word says, in my father's house there are many mansions. So whether one calls himself a black Hebrew, or a black Jew, or an Ethiopian Hebrew, or an Hebrew Israelite, or elect Rastafari, the Hebrew Beta Rastafari Israel. In my father's house, there are many mansions. So these are some of the mansions in our father's house. So let's recognize who and who is a part of our commonwealth and a part of our family. Even though ones may, because of their education, because of their environment and experience, they may have grasped the different aspects of the truth. What's important is that they and we, I and I, grasp the truth. So now let's continue. Verse 41 says, And ye shall keep it a feast to Yahweh seven days in the year, the Feast of Tabernacles of Ingathering. It shall be a statute. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. So we get the month, the, the, the day, the time, and also what is the frequency. So once in a year we have the Feast of Ingathering. Now there's a, there's, a, there's a beautiful prophetic to this for us as the lost sheep and it concerns uh, repatriation. It concerns the preparation for repatriation. And if we look at the even Rastafari movement, which is the which is the the chosen, the elect, because we carry that revelation name, the name, the new name of that revelation. Therefore, to whom more is given, the scripture says, more is required. So a word to the wise should be sufficient. So as we go to verse 42, just to 42 and 43, and we're going to conclude at 44, and then we're going to get into the whole Sha'ina, the whole Sha'ina Araba, this particular day, 
October 19th, which is the seventh day of Sukkot. It says in 42, verse 42, Ye shall dwell in booths, ye shall dwell in booths, seven days, all that are Israelites, all that are Israelian, all that are Israelites, or citizens, say, Israelite born, who are born Israel. That means the distinction between those who are born Israel and those who may have been converted to Judaism. There's a, there's a key distinction. We, even as the lost sheep of the house of Israel, are still born Israel, even though we may not be practicing because of this generational curse for disobedience and because of the outworking of that biblical prophecy that we find best explained in Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 15 to verse 68. Pay careful attention to verse 68 because that is the key connection and link with the so-called transatlantic, but more correctly, the trans-Ethiopic slave trade of our people, the once lost but now found Beta Israel. So here it says that we will dwell in booths or sukkahs, singular, and sukkot in the Hebrew plural, dwell in booths. Seven days all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths or dwell in huts or gojos or das, these African type of temporary um, structures that are made from these four types of four types of um, trees, four types of trees, especially the roof. And as we said before, we would like to explain some of the uh, esoteric um, significance of booths, as well as the the prophetic. There's a connection.